What if I told you there were 42 different ways for you to make money as a musician? Would you believe me? I'll prove it to you. Let's do it. Hey everybody, I'm so thankful you are here. My name is Sweet Deed and thanks for finding my channel. If you are new here, I have a special welcome for you. We do all kinds of things here. We talk about business, finance, strategy, music, lessons with guitar, and all kinds of stuff. Make yourself at home, be comfortable, and stay a while. If you are a returning subscriber, I just want to say thank you very much for coming back. Cool announcement for you. Just finally launched my first online store, so you can get all sorts of apparel, all sorts of fun little saying t-shirts and coffee mugs and bags and all kinds of crazy stuff. You can find that in the comments below. Also, I've been getting a lot of comments about my gear and sort of what am I using and what am I doing. And thanks for all those inquiries, but um, you can find everything that I have below listed in the comments as well. So if you are a returning scriber, you know what time it is. It's time for that artist of the day. So let's get to it. <laughs> Today's artist of the day is Colonel Bruce Hampton, and I have no idea how I'm going to explain this. For those that you that know Colonel Bruce, you already know exactly what I'm about to say, and you could probably say it in a thousand different ways that I'm going to say it, but um, Colonel Bruce was somebody that was just 100% a unique human being that unfortunately is no longer with us, but the time that was spent here, he did amazing things for amazing musicians. Colonel Bruce's legacy goes far beyond what most people's careers would probably ever get to as far as things that he accomplished. He had a band that played the Atlanta Pop Festival in 1970 that featured Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix, to name a few. But also Bruce was somehow somewhat of a mentor to lots of great musicians and artists along the way. Bruce's ability to simply give musicians freedom and permission to play whatever they felt like on his stage gave artists a chance to really grow and become themselves while they played his music in his band. His reach goes beyond generations. We're talking musicians that are in their 50s and 60s all the way down to musicians that are in their 20s and 30s. You just don't see many people like that that are sort of like a AAA baseball coach of musicians who take in all of these different types of musicians and then after time in his band go on to do amazing things. A band definitely worth checking out from his catalog is the Aquarium Rescue Unit and their records were absolutely groundbreaking from a genre perspective mixing rock and roll music with traditional folk instruments like the mandolin. That band's hype was probably captured the best by doing all of the uh, very famous horror tours in the 90s. I'll leave a link to some of Colonel Bruce Hampton's funniest antics that were ever recorded and put on YouTube in the comments below, as well as some links to some of his music as well. It's out there, it's weird, it's crazy, but somehow it's refreshing and also inspiring. So if you're listening up there in the sky somewhere, Bruce, we love you and we miss you. So let's figure out how to make money as a musician, 42 different ways. Let's talk about it. I was fumbling around on Facebook the other day and I ran across this article and it really kind of set me back for a minute and made me realize all the different ways that I'm currently not seeking to make money as a musician. And it made me immediately realize that I needed to share this and get a little bit more in depth with it and let people know about the opportunities that exist that maybe aren't top of mind. Side note, sorry for whoever I saw this from on Facebook that I can't give credit for sharing it with me. I don't remember and that was like weeks ago and I'm sorry I can't remember. So the article breaks down 42 different ways for a musician to make money into a few different categories. They are songwriter and composer revenue, performer and recording artist revenue, performer session musician revenue, knowledge of craft, teaching and producing, brand related revenue, and number six, fan corporate and foundation revenue. 
So if I were to go through each and every single one of these 42, it would take a long time. And I guess I could do that, but if you do, just leave a comment below and let me know that you want me to do that. Um, but if you don't, <laughs> which I'm assuming you might not, I'm gonna put a link of this in the comments below so you can check that out while you're clicking the like button and also the subscribe button as well. So let's just pick a few and explore these topics, maybe the ones that aren't so common. Let's start with the songwriter and composer revenue category. So if you're a songwriter and you write songs for a living and you perform and maybe you're a singer also and you're constantly trying to figure out how to get your songs to either be bought by someone else or you're trying to figure out how to just get them heard in general, uh, this is a great category for you. But in this category, there were a couple of things that stood out I thought was really cool. How about ringtone revenue? Have you ever thought of that? You can put your music into ringtones and then upload them to these sites and when people use them, you make money. It seems like everybody has logic these days, so making a ringtone should be pretty easy. It's also a really cool way to kind of get your music out there if you are a composer. The next one I thought was really cool in this category was lyric display, which just basically talks about uploading your lyrics to sites that host lyrics. You may not know this, but online lyric sites pay publishers the rights to have those lyrics printed on their website. And in turn, those publishers would then pay you. How about sheet music sales? When's the last time you thought about putting your music to sheet music? If you're not capable of doing that, maybe even just simple chord charts would help. But if you can't do that either, it might be worth taking your song to somebody that does transcription services. You might pay a one-time fee, but after you do that, that's literally online forever. And if you're a career musician and you know you're going to be doing this for a very long time, that's a really sound investment. Say it takes a couple of times for you to sell that in order to recoup the payment for you having somebody transcribe it and put it in sheet music. But the rest of the years of you playing music is all profit. That one I thought was really cool. Also, I think there's something to be said for commissions, which is another category that's um, in this particular subcategory. So the commissions is really cool because you're able to get upfront money to basically write or compose um, a song, whether it's instrumental or you know with lyrics that um, matches up with a particular person's agenda or need. Making yourself available for commissions, maybe through simple ad copy on your website or even a targeted ad like on Facebook or something, could yield a really big result. And by result, I mean money. <music> Moving on, performance and artist revenue. There's not much new news in this particular section, I would say. Most of the things that I see are very typical, such as retail sales, digital sales, royalties for performance, etc. But one thing that always slips my brain is the neighboring rights royalties. That just means if somebody that's on foreign soil from where you are decides to record your song, that that's a way that you get your money for them recording the song. Also in this section, they talk about things uh, related to the film industry, like the Film Musician Secondary Market Fund or the Sound Recording Special Payments Fund. These things are really cool to know that they exist and that if you're somebody that's writing and recording music and you're an artist or part of a band or something, you need to know about these. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. How about performer session musician revenue? These are all very cut and dry talking about like studio work, live work, etc. The one thing to notice in this section is a non-featured artist payments. So if you're part of AFM or SAG, you qualify for this particular benefit of getting royalties, just generally speaking, for playing on the track. I think that's something that most people don't realize and um, could be missing out on some money. Also, this speaks to how active your AFM or SAG chapter is as far as their organization and such, which we will not get into that. <laughs> Let's go to the next section. This next section is called Knowledge of Craft, so teaching or producing. 
And obviously the first two are teacher and producer. And I think we all know what that means. There's always academia and those are always really cool to get, but you know, those are highly competitive masterclass lecture type scenarios. And um, you might want to think about starting from the ground up with like master classes and things of that nature through your own social media live streaming format. You could easily set up a Zoom call or any of those types of things if you don't have a lot of gear and you could charge a very honest fee for the production value uh, provided and you can teach and tell people about what you do. You might be surprised how many people want to support you in the endeavor and if you spend time advertising it like you would do a show or a concert, you might be surprised, again, who might show up. Let's move on to brand related things. Brand related material. So yes, we're talking about t-shirts, we're talking about even YouTube stuff that you put out and maybe people find you here and that somehow becomes money. That can come from ads if you reach the certain platform, which yet I have not, but um, that's not really the main reason why I'm here anyway. Let's face it, if I really wanted a lot of money, maybe I'd go be a lawyer or something. But there is plenty and plenty of money to be made as a musician and ad revenue is just one way. Also, I have merchandise links in my comment section, for example. So anything that you put out on YouTube, you can also do that. So I've got product listings of all my camera equipment and my lights and such, but then I also have uh, links to my own personal like t-shirt store and merchandise store that has like you know uh, bags and coffee cups and those type of things. Also some people make money from endorsements so like if you're endorsed with a guitar company or an emerging string company or something that you seek out and you think you like their product and you'd want to endorse them sometimes people will give you money for that or even free stuff that that you would normally have to pay for. Ultimately, that's money saved, which is also earned. And finally, fan, corporate, and foundation type funding. So obviously, there are crowdfunding sites out there that you can still work with that are still popular to use, like Kickstarter, etc. There's also sponsorship opportunities for people, like if you think a brand really lines up with your mission and sort of your goals as an artist, or just your social causes, you can reach out to these companies and show them a history of what you've been doing and how it relates to their brand. You'd be surprised how many people might say yes to you and giving in some form or kind that would uh, really help you out with maybe expenses or just in free stuff. The idea here is just to be creative and just to come up with ways that you can seek sponsorship for what you do. Sponsorship is something that is required to think outside of the box because whenever you're bringing this to somebody, it's really important that they know that you have their best interests at heart as well. In a video for another day, the best way to get a sponsorship is to have a friendship first. Another way for you to get funding in this subgroup is called grants, and I think we all know what they are, but often I feel like we don't really look out into the world to see what is available. My friend Stephen Wood, who is an unbelievable composer, but he's also a nature activist. He finds grants like this all the time where they'll take him and pay for him to go into these deep wilderness places and he'll compose music on something very simple like a handheld piano or something and then he'll take that music back, score it, turn it into a piece and then have it performed for uh, a particular organization, for example. It's creative thinking like that and these times that takes your ideas to wh where you are right now to a whole nother level. So be creative and just take a look and do some Google searching and see what you can find out on the internet. You might be surprised what fits you. So that was a lot. Go to this website down below, click on it, read through everything and figure out some things that you're not doing right now that could be making you money. Speaking of making money, you can support this channel by simply clicking in the comments below, checking out the merch that I have, or checking out some of the gear that I use if you're interested in grabbing gear for your own personal endeavors. It's a wonderful time to be alive, and the internet is vast and 25 years old, and you could be taking advantage of it with your own creative spirits. So, 
check it out, check out my stuff. And until next time, I'm Sweet Deet. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.